بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحبة في الله in preparation for Ramadan as we mentioned before it's important our intention that we make intention to fast the holy month of Ramadan the night each night before we prepare to fast before Fajr and that the intention doesn't the place of the intention is in the heart it doesn't require that you utter it on your tongue and that you should also expect reward from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala don't go in with a negative attitude about Allah expect and believe that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive you and that he's going to give you reward and that he's going to raise you up in status so have a positive outlook about your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and use this blessed month, this blessed time to do good deeds. Don't miss one second if you can. Strive your best during the day and the night. But especially, of course, while you're fasting. You know, get those nawafil in, those extra prayers. Make lots of dua for the Muslims in general, for your family, for your friends, those you know and those you don't know, for the guidance of non-Muslims. Use this time seeking tremendous forgiveness from your Lord, begging Him, crying to Him, pleading with Him to forgive you for the many, many sins you do boldly outside of Ramadan. The Prophet والسلام, said in a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, من قام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه وفي رواية أخرى عند البخاري ومسلم من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه ومن قام ليلة القدر إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه In these hadith that were collected in Bukhari and Muslim and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Imam Bukhari and Muslim and raise them up and bless them to be in Jannah for those great Imams who the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used them as tools which we cannot do without because they preserve the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in these hadith the Prophet alayhi salatu wa said whoever uh, stands for Ramadan or whoever prepares himself for Ramadan iman wa ihtisaban you know, believing in its obligation. And with Iman, believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him and expecting reward and blessings from Allah, having a good positive outlook, then Allah will forgive for him what preceded him in, from his sins. And in another narration that was in with Bukhari and Muslim, whoever fasts Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaban, you know, believing in, in in its obligation and expecting reward and expecting that they'll be forgiven from their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, their sins that preceded will be forgiven and whoever stands or, you know, prays the, 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 the Laylat the Qadr with also with this Iman, believing in it and preparing for it and and, and a believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them and forgive them, Allah will forgive them from those sins that preceded. This shows you the greatness of Ramadan and the importance of preparing ourselves and having a positive uh, uh, look and ex expectation that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and that He will bestow His mercy and favor upon you. Seek His favor during this holy month. One mas'ala comes to mind here, also that the ulama mentioned, that with regards to the major sins, that many of the ulama say that the only way the major sins will be forgiven is by toba. So meaning if you are someone who commits such and such sin outside of Ramadan, and you're seeking the forgiveness of your Lord, and you left that sin during Ramadan, but you didn't really make Tawbah. 
You didn't. You weren't determined to leave the sin. You just did it d during Ramadan. You didn't. Uh, you know, so you weren't determined. You didn't leave that environment, etc., and, and have the sincerity in your toba. Then, according to this view, those major sins that you did will not be forgiven. That this is regards to the minor sin. A lot of these narrations with regards to many of the acts of ibadah that the, uh, are in reference to the minor sins and that major sin requires toba. So it's very important that we have our intention to leave off whatever we're struggling with. If it's alcoholism, if it's adultery, if it is pornography, if it is uh, drug use, if it is whatever, strive your best to make your intention to make toba from that. And I was listening to a very beneficial lecture from one of our mashayikh, one of the ulama, major ulama in, in uh, Medina. Alama Ali Nasser of Fiqih, Allah Ta'ala, he's still alive and still going strong, teaching people in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid. So the Shaykh was talking about the following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and being from Ahl Sunnah. And he's, he was teaching a very important book called Sunnah a Sunnah by Imam uh, Ibn Abi Asim. And in this book, uh, it, it, with regards to what the Shaykh was saying, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he was mentioning the points. He said that, you know, La yukalafallahu nafsan ila wasaha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make an obligation upon you except that He makes you able to fulfill it. And then He was saying, every one of us can leave off drugs. Every one of us can leave off alcohol. Every one of us can leave off zina and adultery. Every one of us can leave off pornography. So he was going into detail. He said, that's how you illustrate your love for the Prophet You say you follow the sunnah. And that you love Muhammad Because that, uh, following the sunnah, loving the Prophet the way we illustrate the love for the Prophet is by following his sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam. And... He said, every one of us is able. We're not going to not be able to do that. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Doesn't mean you're not going to struggle with certain things. Because everyone has a different test. Some people are tested with wealth. So maybe they, they're involved in riba and it's difficult. They have so many business transactions that are tied up in riba. It's hard for them to leave that. That maybe even their livelihood is tied up in muharram. So it's hard for them to leave that. Doesn't mean they... It's that it's easy, but it's not impossible. Another person may be, have difficulty leaving the music. They love the music. It's hard. They can't leave those hardcore hip hop rap beats. They can't leave it. They love it. But it doesn't mean it's not a, it's not possible to leave it. Another person might struggle with the pornography. It's very difficult. It's like a drug. But it's not impossible. What it takes, a habit of in all of these these major sins, and our sins in general, it takes that serious azima. And now, it even comes clear to me as I'm speaking about it, why the ulama make that as a shart. They make that as a condition in your toba, in your repentance, that you have strong determination. Because in fact, it takes real determination. You can say, you can feel sorrow for your sin. You can hate that you're doing it, and you know it's haram. But it, the only way you're going to really stop that, unless you're physically barred from that sin, is when you make that strong determination in your heart, I'm not going back to that. I'm leaving that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what is going to help you overcome that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with tabat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with amnaf and uskin tayyibu amna mutakabinan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to see Ramadan, bless us to benefit of Ramadan, bless us to have our Ramadan accepted, and bless us to practice what we do during Ramadan even better outside of Ramadan and remove the sins. May Allah bless us all with toba to nusuha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with toba to nusuha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with toba to nusuha. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم